Talks about a post-Brexit trade deal have been paused tonight without an agreement, less than a month before the transition period comes to an end. The UK's lead negotiator, David Frost, and his EU counterpart, Michel Barnier, have said that significant divergences remain and that Boris Johnson and the president of the EU Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, will meet tomorrow to discuss the next steps. Our deputy political editor, Vicky Young, reports. Everything will soon be changing for this distribution company and thousands of others. In just four weeks, goods going back and forth across the border with the EU will need extra paperwork and checks. Some fear that could lead to widespread disruption and congestion. It's difficult enough getting in and out of the UK at the moment with the delays at the, at the border crossings, the ferries. If you're adding 8, 16, 12 hours, whatever that may be going forward, who's going to pick up the costs? Um, for, for every wheel that's to, if our wheels aren't turning and if we're not earning any money. In Kent, they're preparing a park for 10,000 lorries. A trade deal with the EU would mean businesses can buy and sell goods without paying taxes or tariffs. But there will still be more checks whether there's a deal or not. Will we get a deal? The EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, has been in London all week. Important day, determination. But the UK has accused the EU of making last-minute demands. We want the EU to recognise that the UK is a sovereign and independent nation, and it is on the basis of that that a deal will be done. Uh, it, is, it is tricky, but we are working hard. Uh, David Frost and his team are working incredibly hard on this uh, in good faith, uh, so let's see where we get to. But they didn't get very far. Tonight, after another day of intensive talks, everything's on hold. A joint statement on behalf of chief negotiators Lord Frost and Monsieur Barnier said the conditions for an agreement are not met due to significant divergences. They agreed to pause the talks in order to brief their principals on the state of play of the negotiations. There's a lot at stake and the Irish Prime Minister says he fervently hopes there will be a deal. Given the enormous negative impact of COVID-19 on our economic and social life, the last thing or citizens need now is a second shock uh, of the kind that a no-deal Brexit would bring. For example, if the UK government wants to give financial help to tech firms, will it need permission from the EU? Would there be a punishment if it went ahead anyway? This is all about businesses on one side not having an unfair advantage over their competitors, the so-called level playing field. And then there's fishing. EU countries want a guarantee that their boats can continue to operate in UK waters. If not, the EU might make it much harder for us to sell fish to them. France, like all its partners, has a veto. We'll conduct our own evaluation of a deal if one exists. That's normal. We owe it to the French, we owe it to our fishermen and to other economic sectors. Tonight, discussions have stalled and no one's quite sure when the negotiators will be back. Larger than life. Optimism that a deal could be close to tonight. The UK side saying they've hit a big problem and the EU needs to be more flexible. So it's time for the politicians to get involved. Boris Johnson will speak to the president of the European Commission tomorrow. Then that's been described to me by one government insider as a high stakes moment. It's a chance for a breakthrough or it could be the end of the road, although I'm not getting that impression. Remember, these moments of drama do often come just before some difficult compromises and nobody's walking away yet. All right, Vicky, thank you. Vicky Young and our Europe editor, Katia Adler, is in Brussels tonight. So they're calling it a pause, Katia. What's your reading of this? Well, Jane, you know, like so much during the Brexit negotiations, we can look at this in a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of way. On the glass half full side, both sides still say uh, they want a deal and they want to work towards a deal. So it really depends what steps they now take, what, how willing they are on both sides to compromise to get a deal. Don't forget, these compromises are difficult and they're political. So you could cynically say this crisis is quite useful for both sides to show to their domestic 
domestic audience. We have fought to the better end before they then agree a deal. On the glass half empty side, though, there are clearly very big differences. And it makes sense because the EU and UK have approached these trade talks from very different directions. The EU, the priority has always been the single market. They worry about UK competition. They hope to bind the UK in a kind of common rule book, like on government subsidies, for example. But the UK, after Brexit, wants to be competitive. It wants to be nimble. It doesn't want to tie its hands. And it wants to hold on to as much sovereignty as possible. So after all this, is a deal still possible? Yes. Is it definite? No. One thing is different, dif definite, and that neither side will sign up to a deal unless they believe they can sell it back home as a victory. All right. Katia, thank you. Katia Adler in Brussels.